This is Dave Sudsy Settlemeyer on Nasty Knuckles. Jump on the wagon. You'll love it. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Rig Aurelia? What a weekend. Oh, yeah. You recover yet? Uh, pff, recover? <laughs> what? <laughs> Buddy, rest and relaxation, rejuvenation. What were the words you gave me? Regeneration and re- regurgitation recovery, was relax. said. <laughs> regurgitation was said by a friend of ours. That one doesn't really fit in. No, it does not. It doesn't. But fans of Philly cannot thank them enough. Yep. Joe and Paige. Joe wasn't there. He actually got a little food poison. Sorry, buddy. I heard about that. Yeah. But double booked himself. He got yeah. Uh, he two did. Irons he did. Fire. He did. But that looked like fun too. Yeah, right? They looked like they were having some fun down there in Tampa. But I don't think they had as much fun as we did. Um, great time. Like I said, Paige was awesome. She yep. was the HBIC, oh, the head yeah. biatch in charge, That's is right. what she was calling herself, and she yeah. was that. Um, we had a great time though. Seriously, can't wait for Nashville. Oh, yeah. No no question. I think there's going to be 500 Flyer fans going to Nashville. Yeah. Um, looking forward to that. But uh, a hell of an experience. Yes. Uh, they, they absolutely know what they're doing, teeing this thing up uh, perfectly for, for the fans. It was an amazing time. We got an opportunity to see the Flyers uh, yes. play Vegas. So we, watched, we had a watch party, and then we're at the game there in Arizona. But the Flyers are now on a three-game winning streak. Yes, which we, which we called. We, <laughs> we did, did call we it. Did. If they win in Vegas, they had – I mean, listen, we kid around, but you have to win these games. You have won. to win You have to games. beat Arizona. Yep. Everybody's like, oh, they're, for sure they're going to win. And we said they were going to win. Yep. But you still have to do it. You have to. You have to win these games. And then last night they come back with another great effort. Um, totally dominated yeah. the Devils team. I and, mean, and they should. And they should. And they should. But they are. And that's the most important thing is they're, 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 they're scoring. Yeah. They're attacking. Um, you know, going back to the Vegas game, uh, you know, Vegas is a better team, obviously, of the last three. And Carter Hart stood in his head and he was amazing. essentially won the game for them. But they, they've still found a way to score goals. They got a shot exactly. um, by a country mile in that game. But nonetheless, they found a way to win, which is the most important to, to break a 10-game losing streak, which yes. wasn't easy to do on the road. And then they followed up the effort in Arizona, which, again, um, you know, it was, it, it was somewhat close early on. But then yeah. you know, the Flyers opened up, and yeah. they were obviously the better team. They found ways to score goals. Get a couple of goals from JVR. You know, had he's hot. He's hot. He's, he's hot. Back. He's back. This guy gets on a streak. Him and Cam. Yeah. Him and Cam Cam's with back. a big hat trick last night. But you're right. They uh, found ways to score in Vegas, and that's what you have to do. Actually, have gotten a couple bounces now because so many went against them. Yep. Um, just thinking about the game in Arizona where the goalie just said. Here you go. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, little, right. right up the middle. Freebie. I think I could have buried that I one. think you could have. I think I would have buried that. I, I may not have been. been in that area. I probably couldn't have gotten to there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, right. Either way, man, great trip. Can't thank uh, fans of Philly enough and just can't wait to go again, man. Yeah, it was it was an absolute blast. Got an opportunity to meet some some new people. Yeah. Um, some just amazing Flyer fans that have been on these trips before. Yeah. So super cool experience. Looking forward to, uh, to to Nashville, and they 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 know what they're doing. So check them out, fansofphilly dot com. Yeah, you want to join? Trust um, me. What but, a, what a, what a setup too, by the way. Yeah, it was a great spot. Quickly, oh, Riles spent most of the weekend in the hot tub. In the sun, in the hot tub. In the yeah, sun, in the hot seat. He was he was enjoying that. Caught oh, him yeah. sleeping a couple times in there. Oh, chats. You were sleeping. Rest and relax, eyes shut. Rest. Eyes shut. It's okay. Um, before the storm, dude. That's true. It was awesome, though. Like, thank you guys again. And like Riley said, check them out, fans of Philly. You want to jump on these uh, trips. They're amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, Flyers are, 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 you know, a streak. on a streak, obviously, now. You know, two's a streak, three's a streak. Yes. Um, but they got games um, coming up that 
are absolute must wins. I mean, I think yes. every game now is a must win, but uh, these these games that um, the, the opponent is in, in the same situation or even lesser, yeah. um, you know, they, they absolutely have to capitalize off these these games and and keep this going. I, I like I like where it's going. You know, the yeah. last two games are absolutes. They they had to win those games, um, and they did, but. They're they're playing. They just look like more of a team. So like much they, tighter on the ice and and um, last you know. last night that was an absolute dominating effort. Yeah, I mean, and you know it sucks because they had lost to Jersey twice. So yeah, you watch that game and you're like, how in the heck did we lose to New yeah. Jersey? And, and not to shit on the Devils because they're rebuilding. Right. And Lindy Ruff's done an unbelievable job there. Um, but uh, Flyers just they look they played the way they're supposed to play. The way we expected them exactly, to play. Exactly, yeah. And it just takes, we had said this over the losing streak, you just got to get something to get you rolling, get yeah. the confidence back. You definitely saw some confidence last night because some people don't understand, Riley, you played, you know, I was around it. Those aren't easy games to win because no. people are expecting you to win. Those are the ones you drop, yeah. you know, sometimes. But they did not. They, they showed up. Uh, Mike Yo had said this was a big game. He stressed that before. Uh, we have to come out ready to play tonight um, for the fans, for us, keep this thing going, and they did that yeah, from absolutely. the get-go. And how much do you think of the success is coming from the coaching change? I know, like again, the last two games were, were, should have been w winnable games, absolutely, no matter what. But like they just seem to be playing more like a team. Do you, do you think this has something to do with the coaching change or is this just total coincidence? Well, I think I think it has something to do with it just because you saw them play this team yeah. a week ago and a week before that and they were nowhere close. And that the last New Jersey Devils game was was scared me. Yeah. Because oh, you go into there needing a win and they looked lifeless, which I know they weren't, but that's the way it looked. Yeah. So I think Mike's, uh, you know, kind of changed a couple things up, and and he he's got them. They looked tight defensively. Yeah. They look, uh, you know, everything's close. Yep. Uh, stay connect. Yeah. Stay right. Connect. <laughs> uh, French Mike. That's just saying. I used to love when he would say that, but it looks it's like true, though, right? they are staying closer together. Guys aren't flying the zone. I mean, there's so many little things, and, and hopefully they keep this confidence going. Like you said, the next couple games are, are must-wins. Um, and the way they're playing, I, I don't doubt that they're they're going to win these games. Yeah, 100%. So. And then on the off offensive side of things, I feel like we, we kind of mentioned it, is that they're attacking a lot more. Yes. And they didn't have a power play last night, but the power play looked better in Arizona. They, sure were, they were at least like funneling pucks, too, yes. and, and getting to the net. They seem um, to be moving it really quickly. Moving it like quicker. Like boom, 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 yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's like a two-pass rule, two-pass in a shot. Yeah. You know, we, we did that back in the day with, with the Phantoms and stuff, and teams do that. You know, if you don't if you don't have anything, go around the horn, one, two, at least get a play to the net, you right. know. And whatever the, the philosophy is, they're certainly attacking more 5-1-5 five, five in power play. So it'll be, uh, be interesting to see how this thing moves forward, if they can keep this momentum rolling. Yeah, um, I hope they, they do. They have to, otherwise um, they're going to be uh, – Gonna be chasing behind the rest of the season. Yeah, it's not be a fun. I, I think they they get these next two, and and not to say they don't get more than that, but you know they lost ten, but you just pick up three, so you pick up six points. All of a sudden, yeah, right. That wild card spot's not. 100%. It's, it's it's right there now. It's not so far you, to reach. You drop you drop two of those games, or even one. Yeah. Um, but they won three, and that's what they were looking for, and and uh, I really think they've they've got it going in the right direction. Oh. Uh, but you know, by the looks of these last few games, absolutely, I agree. Nass. Well, let's get rocking. One of our awesome sponsors, My Bookie. Yeah. From all the biggest games to the smallest events, make every bet worth your while with My Bookie. Nast. Listen, guys, seriously, start by doubling your first deposit instantly with My Bookie's first deposit bonus. Double your money before you even place a bet. And all you have to do is sign up and deposit using our exclusive promo code Knuckles at my bookie. Have you been doubling up, Nast? I do double up. Oh, love to hear that. There are tons of great games and prop bets to take advantage of this week. But let me point you in the right direction for your first wager. Listen, get in on the action now. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a ton of hockey games on the slate this week, plenty of NBA, and some big matchups in the NFL. Where the hell else are you going to be getting your first deposit doubled? You don't.
Use promo code Knuckles and double your first deposit up to $1,000. Yes, sir. Take a look also, guys, at the unique props, teasers, and parlays all offered right now. My bookie. Check it out. Seriously, it's the best. Let's go. Woo. All right, dude. Let's hop into episode 53 with... Sudsy. And oh, God. Sudsy. <laughs> Dave Sudsy Settlemeyer. Yeah. Get ready. Let's go. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Settlemeyer. And this week's guest is a guy I know fairly well. He's pretty much a legend around here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Sudsy Settlemeyer. Dad, welcome to the show. Thank you, son. Riley, good to see you, man. <laughs> hey, Sudsy, what's happening? Oh, just had a rough day at work and just happy to be here with you guys. Well, thanks for nice. joining us. Out at the golf course. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, you weren't too late, Dad. We, we waited for a while, but it's all right. You're worth it. You're worth it. You're battling a little uh, cold and flu, or what do you got going on? Yeah, I got a little sinus stuff going here. Yep. Come back to New Jersey, and my head blows up. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It does happen. It does happen. You're, you're uh, working at your golf course? Yeah, Burlington uh, Country Club. Great people there. I've known the pro for years and uh, a few of the members. Uh, so it's fun. I enjoy awesome. it. That's cool. That's you, cool. Are, uh, you are a ringer on the golf course, aren't you? I used to be. Yeah. You, now you I'm used in... to take everybody's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm in the old folks club now. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. He can still play. I play with him. He's fine. this cat. You... Well, Riggs. I mean, Elvis has a better swing than you. I mean, let's be honest. I'm kidding. Riggs would be good, Dad, if he actually, like, try, like, maybe you get on me for practice. Yeah. Like, if we have a tournament coming up, there's no going to hit any balls. It's just step to the, oh, yeah, to right the, the tee and boxing. let's go. And he can't understand why it's going <laughs> through the woods. And meanwhile, we go through six sets of balls, I think, six yeah. cases. Usually. Oh, yeah, easy. Close. Well, easy. I, I played behind him in a tournament once. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 witnessed, I witnessed. I witnessed. Yeah. You witnessed it. We, we bought, put uh, some helmets on, and we are behind him. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so, Dad, uh, you know, I was we were um, with fans of Philly last week. Uh, great people. So much fun. They, they took us. Uh, they take us on a few trips. Uh, our next one's in Nashville. It's a, you know, we'll be better. You might want to sign up for that one. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I got 500 cowboy, fans. I got cowboy boots. He's yeah. got boots. Yeah, I've, I've, seen, him. I've boots. seen him. I've seen him. He's got the dancing boots. But um, Riley obviously knows a lot about you, but uh, someone asked me um, about kind of your journey and, and asked about me and you. And um, I started telling him a little bit of your story. And Riles was like, dude, like we got to get. We got to get him on. Like, this is amazing. And it really is, I guess, because it's me and I've known it. I think it's awesome, but I didn't realize, like, other people would be like, I mean, usually when I tell them, they're like, no way. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it is pretty but wild. It's, a, it's a wild story how, you know, obviously being uh, both of us from North Carolina, you being from the metropolis of Summerfield, um, <laughs> yeah. North Carolina, try to find that on the map. Um, but uh, kind of basically just a. Uh, if you don't mind, like telling us how you kind of got started being a stick boy in, in Greensboro with the Generals. Well, in um, 1959, they started uh, the Greensboro Generals in the Eastern League. Your granddad had a little car lot. We happened to know the owner of the team, so he started bringing all the guys in to buy cars because my dad had give them a good deal, take care of them. We got season tickets. Um, Went to the game, and I thought it was the greatest thing i ever seen in my life. Uh, we were there every night. I'd miss school and go watch them practice when I knew they would practice. And uh, so just the guys coming over to the car lot, hanging out. they come over and play cards and dominoes with my dad and stuff after practice. So when I was 13, uh, they let me be the water boy, stick boy. So I did that for... Three years, and I. by the time I was 13, 14, I said, hockey's what I want to do. I love it. I'm just going to do anything I can to do it. Playing in a recreation league, we used to get to play six to eight games a year. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, you'd well. see the ice about every three weeks. <laughs> My uh, The first year I skated, I was like nine years old. Wake up at 5.30 on the ice at 6 and get your 45 minutes in and then come back three weeks later. Wow. Three weeks later. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be going back. So, uh, 
I hung with it. And uh, so when I was 13, I went to Canada my first year for a real hockey camp. Uh, they sent 10 of us up from Greensboro, and they sent eight of the guys home after the first day. <laughs> they didn't a little want afraid. A little afraid. afraid. They didn't want to see a body check. <laughs> oh, so you guys were not playing the body at that oh, age? Oh, you couldn't 13, hit. You couldn't no, hit. there was. Is that why your numbers were so good? Because no one was hitting you? Is that? Is that? Because <laughs> I, I almost hear every week. Did you know I scored thirty nine? No, thirty eight. Thirty eight in thirteen games. Whoa. Yeah. Like, I'm like, well, how many you apples? Against? Play for McDonald's hamburgers. <laughs> Co- <laughs> Coach would take me for a steak dinner every night and got a hat trick. <laughs> so that's why you were scoring. It's my so best much. friend's yeah. dad, Mike oh, Jordan. Mike Jordan, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can't believe they would spend that money. Oh. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. And uh, there was probably seven or eight good hockey players in the whole town, yeah. guys that enjoyed it. But once they got into high school and stuff, they drifted off to other things. So I got to travel, started traveling with a team when I was like 15 on the weekends. And with the generals? With, with the, the generals, oh, the yeah. Team, okay. And uh, we're, uh, I, the coach uh, was a small guy, stocky guy, and he was a tough guy too. And he knew I had a little bit of a switch because of my mother yelling at me all the time. <laughs> And uh, so uh, he liked the way I played, and uh, probably one of the most embarrassing moment of my life. Uh, they had picked an uh, all star team from Charlotte and one from Greensboro, and we'd play in the summer. So there was actually about 1,500, 2,000 people at this game, and I was 13 playing in the 15 to 18 age group. So right off the bat, this guy runs me from behind, blasted into the boards. It hurt me, but I wasn't going to lay there. But I hear, are you going to take that? It's my mom. <laughs> <Your> <laughs> yeah. So I got to get up and go after this uh, guy. You going to take that. So I get thrown out. We both get thrown out of the game, and that made me matter because I wanted to play. Yeah. So then uh, I go down to the locker room. I'm taking my stuff off, and then I got mad. So I come flying out of the locker room. I went in their locker room after him, and I got him. And then the next thing, my coach, who was one of the general's players, Ted Lanyon, comes in. He goes, come on, Junior, and he picks me up under one arm. I was about 130 pounds. <laughs> he carries me out. So I'm really ticked in, but that was on, that was when I, I just said, yeah, this is what I want to do, and then I went to Canada for the hockey school and stuff um, the next couple summers. Who was your coach in Canada, you said? A lot of the Canadians the, will love this. The the first My first year as a de- defenseman coach was Tim Horton. Wow. The man Timmy was, Ho. He was a beast. Yeah? I loved him, man. He was so good to us. You know, he worked with us and, you That's know, cool. took an interest in it. So I went to that same school for three years. Oh, okay. And, I didn't even uh, know that. Yeah, and then uh, came back to Greensboro and Spongy, who I'd started to talk about our coach. He goes, you know, he says, you're just a little too small to play like you do. Somebody's going to kill you. <laughs> he goes, what if we give you some goalie equipment? I said, I don't care, whatever, man. I just <laughs> I just want to play. So, wow. Uh, That's I was, how you landed up in the pipes. Like I that. was 18. Wow. And they gave me some old equipment, and I practiced a few months. And we were down in uh, Jacksonville one night playing, and the Jacksonville's a bad team, and our guys were taking the night off, so Spongy's just losing his mind. So he grabs me at the end of the second period, and he goes, go get dressed. He says, you're playing the third period. So I go in and get dressed, and he comes in, and he's screaming at the guys. And he goes, you guys better take care of this kid. So I went out, and I played. Uh, Had you played a game in net no. at all? Just <laughs> no. practice, right? Yeah. You were just putting them on for practice? Yeah. Because you only had one goalie or something? Yeah. Or how did I'd, that work? Uh, one guy on the team used to come in at like 7 in the morning, Barry Solivero. Real hard-working kid, and he'd come in, and I before I go to school, he'd come in and shoot pucks at me. 
for an hour, and then I go to school. Hmm. And uh, a couple of practices with the team and stuff, but it was just foggy the way he was. He was so mad. He was, you're playing, and these jerks better play good. (laughs) So I actually played the third period, had four or five saves, and made one real good save at the end of the game, and we won. Uh, I didn't give up any, so we won uh, three to one or something. So that was my first game. And uh, impressive, then, you're not all around athlete, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just we we had a defenseman, Roger Wilson, who just went over and told Jacksonville before we started the period, if anybody comes over the blue line, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so so that put a little damper on yeah. them too. Oh my God, that's <laughs> great. Then did you now? Is that when you filled? They threw you in, and did is that when Jacksonville? Then they how did the that, next year? Um, there was the same situation. Um, I was in college that year and I had to drop out, get my tonsils taken out. So the army grabbed me because I was out of school. So I was going to have to go to active duty the middle of March. And this was like the end of February. So again, the coach said, go get dressed. You're playing the third period. And we're playing Jacksonville again. So I played and uh, didn't give up any goals again. Played pretty good. Their goalie got hurt in the game right at the end. He hurt his knee. Is Ron Lowe. Oh, no way. It was yeah. Ron Lowe? Ron oh, wow. Lowe. <laughs> so their coach comes down, knocks on our door, and asks Spongy. He goes, can we use your kid? we got to play you guys again tomorrow night. So I ended up playing – for against. Jacksonville against the Greensboro Generals the wow. next night. They lit me up, and all the people are booing every time they'd score on me. <laughs> What's that? You guys there. Oh, that. Oh. 49 Did you know I still yeah. had that? Wow. I made. I was this is the puck. soaking wet. Oh, I bet. It's a lot of rubber. I, I come in. I'd never played a full game anyway. I played periods. Right. And I came in, and I over to the Greensboro room and drug my stuff in, and I was sitting there just dehydrated and shaking. <laughs> needed, some, up. needed some multi-grain goldfish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, I'll do the trick. So I'm sitting there, and I'm just dead. <laughs> and uh, their coach comes over again and goes, you want to go to Jacksonville and play for us? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they ended up taking me down. I, I was down there about a week in uh, Jacksonville before I had to go enlist in the army. So wow. uh, that was that was my games. And then I went in for uh, active duty for six months. And then when I came back, I got my first job with the Roanoke Valley Rebels. Yeah. Wow. And how old were you at that time? Uh, I was 20. 20, all right. Yeah. Derek was just uh, – he was born in March – and then I went to Roanoke in uh, August. Wow. It was a Southern Hockey League? Yeah. Now, what was the it, difference between them? Because did you play in Greensboro for the Roanoke? Because I remember I have, I have a picture of you in, like, I guess you were playing D for the Roanoke team. Or was yeah. that just warm-ups? <laughs> no, that was – You played against – We were shorthanded, yeah. I played against Greensboro as a defenseman. Okay, okay. We had – Pilling, the coach, he liked to use me a little bit. He knew I was, had a few problems mentally. and <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do that know you. Well, we're playing in the Eastern League. Your roster was 13 players and a goalie. So you had to do whatever the heck you had to do. Right. And one night we had some injuries, so – come down to Greensboro and he told me pack a bag and uh, he used me to kill a few shifts or serve a penalty or whatever you know it wasn't like I was out there every shift how cool would that be though like for (laughs) me like I'm thinking as an equipment guy trainer well, I could never – I never played hockey, so I could never do it. But just to even get the dress and take a warm-up. We always used to say that a lot of the equipment guys. would be so sick. Oh, no Bucky. Yeah, well, I warm up. And you had no Bucky in the warmy because you had the long locks. You could do it then. You might wear a helmet now if you took warmies. Yeah. I yeah. mean, unless you gel up. Oh, I mean, well, I'd have, to, I'd have to slick it back like Riles did. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. That stuff looked like straw coming out the side, you know. It does, I'd, it I'd, does again. I'd slap on my Makita helmet. 
helmet. I wore a helmet. I <laughs> yeah. wasn't totally nuts. Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, you were totally so, so one thing I was going to ask you real quick about Roanoke, Dad, um, I thought it was funny. I remember seeing years ago, uh, there's a there's a best-selling book, anyway, uh, and it's called Young Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Young Dave, there it is. It's called Young Dave. Oh, um, man. I mean, this thing Let's is, it, it's a best-seller. Um, there's only two copies, so that's the that's the only problem. But uh, one of the pictures we'll we'll, we'll put up on our uh, on our page is uh, your team picture, and I'm looking at it. And I remember years ago, Dad. I'm like, is that Mike Keenan? Mike Keenan played on your team. Yeah. What kind of a player was he? Mike actually was a a cerebral player, but he worked hard, took the rough stuff. He he played all he played defense played center he could play wing um again smart enough man knew he wasn't going right to the pros so he played the one year and went back to canada and got into coaching and stuff but he he did a heck of a job for our team when he played now was he um we'll get into him a little bit uh with the flyers but playing was he a little goofy, or was he pretty? No, he no. he he was a smart player. He could uh, he just did a little bit of everything. He okay. could pass the puck, shoot the puck. I mean, he wasn't a wizard goal scorer, but he would be your good, steady third line centerman okay. or something. And if he played defense, he just got back there. He moved the puck. You know, just did the right things. Was he pretty hard? Was he, you said he's a pretty hard player. Like yeah, he, yeah. oh, he didn't shy away. He, yeah. he, Mike was probably 185, 90 pounds back then. That was average. Right. There was a few. We had a few uh, big guys, but but Mike didn't back away from anything. You know, yeah. good player. That's interesting. That, that always interesting. blew my mind the first time I saw it. I'm like, that's yeah, Mike Keenan. Right? And then I, I couldn't <laughs> wait to ask him. I was like, was he on your team in Roanoke? Why did you never tell me this? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know. Especially because you land up working with him later later on yeah. in life, right? Did he change? Did he change quite a bit personality wise, or is he the same guy just in the, obviously on the other side of Mike, the fence? And- Mike stayed to himself, you know. Uh, even when he was in Roanoke, uh, me and him used to drink green alcohol in the Whoa. Jersey room together Jungle after Jersey? the games. <laughs> yeah. Jersey room. <laughs> Well, I guess that was pretty normal. But yeah, yeah but Mike, like, well, Mike was with Rita then, so he'd we'd have a couple, and he'd have to go home. But uh, yeah, he he was a solid player. He's a good teammate. That's good. Oh, what team was that? Roanoke that Valley was Rebels. Roanoke. That's okay. a Southern so that Hockey your, League. Right? Okay, that was before the Firebirds. All right. Yeah. yeah. That is uh, that's hilarious. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. What are the chances of that? Well, um, I was going to ask you about. Um, when you landed up being with with the Firebirds, I think you have played five games according to Hockey DB. Five games in three years is that is that accurate? I thought you played we were, more I, than that. I, yeah, those records weren't real great. I played a lot more than you that. Did, right? Yeah, we uh, was two years in Roanoke with Greg Pilling. He was our coach, and then when we came up with the Firebirds, Pill was the general manager and coach. So he brought about five of us up with him. Jack Chip Chase, uh, defenseman, Wayne Mosdell, myself, Dale McLeish, Rick's brother. Okay. Uh, but we brought uh, Michelle Pallant, uh Frenchman, uh, Richard Champeau. There's about five or six of us from our Roanoke team. And then we picked up some guys like Bobby Collard and Gordy Brooks, who were our big scorers. They'd played in Washington and St. Louis. Uh, Randy Osborne, real good goal scorer that the uh, Flyers had. But uh, we ended up with the Firebirds for three years and three great years. We just had great teammates, and Pill always brought in. We were always tough. You know, he'd, he'd go after all the guys we wanted to kill in the Eastern League and bring them up with the Firebirds, and we're all together. It was just a tremendous time. You guys won a championship, right? Yeah, we won a championship our last year. So how did you guys draw? You played in the Civic Center, which isn't there anymore, which I wish it was because I was so young. I I vaguely remember going up in an elevator. I remember (laughs) Turk, Jim Evers, thanks, Turk, for locking me in stalls and shit like that. But I vaguely remember 
I remember going to a game one time, and I can't remember who I went with, but they took me because you were obviously working, and they were like, oh, you should have been here last week. Your dad played, or he had to back up, or you played, or something. But how did you guys draw in Philly with the Flyers being there? We we had a really good following, actually. The, the Civic Center was a horseshoe-type rink, and the people sat, like, up above and looked into the ice, and then on the one end was uh, a stage across it. Oh, okay. And uh, we we averaged about six thousand. The oh, place wow. held That's a, really good. it held about eighty one hundred. Oh, nice. But tickets were six bucks. Oh, yeah. And it was the day of the Broad Street Bullies, and we were just a little bit less than them. We oh, we wow. had some boys that could rock and roll. Yeah. And um, I was going to ask you that if they were tough. The one thing uh, I Riley enjoy this. Uh, one of Derek's first games, he came up. His granddad brings him up. And uh, it just happened to be a good weekend. I would uh, just met a young lady that summer, and I was seeing. So she was coming to the game on Friday night. And then I had another friend I just met up in Boston a little time earlier and flying her in Saturday night for the game. So I tell my dad, Derek's pushing six years old i said okay you got a job to do here i said i got a friend coming tonight to the game and then somebody coming tomorrow night so you gotta erase his mind for saturday (laughs) night so we go over across the street to the hilton for drinks after the game so they had little swizzle sticks they were hockey sticks they were stirs right yeah stirs for drinks so so I make a little puck up, and Derek's passing back and forth with Dale. They're having fun. And he turns around, and he goes, Hey, Dad, I like this one better than the one last night. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my dad, and I went, Good oh. job. Oh, oh, it's, it's, yeah. like it's his fault, right? Like, I'm, not, I'm not even six. Like, I'm really going to think of that. <laughs> I... You should have been a little smart. You should have just sent me home or something. <laughs> but I liked going. It was. I, oh, I remember. I don't remember saying that, but I remember playing. Yeah. The, you know, like on the in the booth there. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's funny. But the Firebirds, um, they were the affiliate of the Flyers, right? Yeah. You guys. Yeah, were the we affiliate. we had the Richmond Robins American League, and then we were the team under that. So, so the Red- equivalent to like East Coast League then, correct? Oh, it's North. It's called the North American League. Yeah. We were actually, everybody else in the league had ties to world hockey teams. We were the only ones in NHL. Reggie oh, okay. Lemelin was with us, drafted by the Flyers. Okay. Randy Osborne, a guy named Doug Ferguson. Um, but we were the the second farm team for them. Coatsy and all the crazy guys were down with Richmond Robbins. And uh, <laughs> the beautiful man, I met him in the early 70s. We actually saw Coatsy this we weekend. Did see we Coatsy surprised him. He had no idea we were in scared Arizona. Scared the shit out of him. We actually scared him. <laughs> Steve! Come around the corner. The door. Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck are you two doing here? I'm like, hey, don't worry about it, Steve. Where are you going? To the bar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah. Hey, oh, but uh, anyway, that yeah, that's... um. We were, Ra, I know Ross has a few questions about that, but um, during the Firebirds, I remember I have this uh, magazine, mate, and you, I'm sure you probably have a copy of it too, but Slapshot was being filmed. And I remember my dad saying, I, I'm trying to get in it. I'll be a Zamboni driver. I'll be anything. <laughs> like, man, why couldn't you have been the trainer? He didn't well, really say much. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. Well, he was a young kid who was a trainer in Johnstown. But- oh, so he was actually, he was in hockey. Yeah, okay. they they came to us, and if you noticed, our Firebird jersey was used. We used the Bose Jaros um, for the other team, but they came through. We all had to sign little waivers and stuff that if our face was in the movie, blah blah blah, and all that stuff. But I begged them. I said, I don't. I just want to be in the movie. I'll drive the Zamboni because you had to be six feet tall. Uh, <laughs> I should have got a good lawyer right there. Yeah, right? yeah right? discrimination. Just, just yeah. Total Total discrimination. Well, yeah. Paul Newman's, I could eat peanuts off his forehead. <laughs> his forehead, yeah, right. He, he was that short? Oh, yeah, he really. He's, he's like 5'6". Really? I didn't know that. And, yeah, and the guy that played him or did his skating was Roddy Bloomfield. Um, but anyway, there was only five actors in that whole movie. It was hysterical. 
and my roommate Mark Bousquet, who was called the Poodle, he was one, the of the one of the at goons the end. at the end. Yeah, we went to. They sent us to the premiere, and we're dying laughing, and all the people in the theater are looking at us. Is this funny? And then they then they saw Bosco, and they're all looking oh, at us. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the place went nuts. But it, I think, that's one of the greatest movies ever. Oh, and yeah, it's hundred oh, percent. It's, yeah, it's it's right on the ticket. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's. That's um. So in the movie, the brothers. Yeah. You know, oh, they're your brothers. Yeah. <laughs> when you get on the bus, yeah. remember? You actually played. I played against. Yeah, they're um, Steve and uh, Jeff were in the movie. Jack, who was the toughest of the brothers, was up with the Minnesota Fighting Saints, so he couldn't be in the movie. Uh. And they used the real Dave the Killer Hanson, the blonde. As his as a brother, right? Because uh, okay. Jack had blonde hair, but he was really mean. He was and they, tough, yeah. So, but yeah, I played against them, and uh, we got some cool pictures of yeah. uh, that. I, I got that. a couple. Yeah, there's some pictures of me, and with they wore the glasses. Oh too. yeah, they were, were they the only guys that wore glasses yeah. when they played? Yeah, God. that's incredible. That I, actually, it is that they actually did that. I actually yeah. won't wear mine in men's league because yeah, yeah, I can right. see better with them. They wear they wear buckets or just the just the glasses, no bucket. Oh no, they they had they wore helmets. Yeah, they did. Yeah. But they uh, but they had the tape, the tape and, and the whole thing. Oh, did they? Oh, oh wow. it was, I, didn't I didn't know, know that, that was actually real. Oh yeah, it, it was. It was is that hysterical. more of a spectacle, or is that actually like they're actually worried about their vision? I think they needed them yeah, to really, see, yeah. and they didn't want to wear contacts, obviously. Yeah. And then our buddy Homer played on that team too Did he? homer got sent down from uh the fighting saints and he played in johnstown for about a week and a half and uh, we're riding into the city on the bus and we got the radio going they're going um jack carlson called up to the fighting saints and we go yeah there's one goon gone and they go uh, sit down was Paul Holmgren. Well, we didn't know who Homer was and then, uh, until we got there. We got there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll swap yeah. yeah, the only difference is Homer's got a smaller nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, they, that's when uh, the Flyers caught on about Homer. Okay. You know, wow. Okay. Because Billy went back and got, uh, you should have seen what they sent down, and then they grabbed Homer that summer. Wow. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't know that. That is interesting. I just want to. I just want to make sure that the the listeners and the viewers understand that you you were the equipment manager, you were the medical guy, yeah, and you were a call up backup goaltender, potentially even a defenseman, maybe at this time or that was maybe in, you in played, up. but you're like yeah. Jackie Moon of the yeah, Firebirds, yeah. The Firebirds, Jackie <laughs> Moon, do some marketing, maybe we'll do yeah. some GM mm-hmm. work. The uh, with the Firebirds, you played. D too, right? Yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Did. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you got the unsung hero the one year, right? You played. Actually, I did. Yeah, I. Uh, it was. <laughs> I played. Oh, I don't know about six, six or seven games in gold. Played out defense five or six games. Pilling got suspended. They're our coach. So they made me coach for Come the on. ten games. So you are Jackie Moon. And uh, <laughs> so everything went well. He he had a walkie-talkie up top in the stands. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he called down. So I'd listen to him the first four or five games. <laughs> and then we we come back into Philly one night. So I'm going, I'm turning this thing off. <laughs> So, Bill's sitting across <laughs> from us, and I got the thing off, and he's wanting to say something. We're killing penalties or something, and I'm not answering. He's standing Yelling. up, and he's waving. And I'm going, guys, Pills losing his mind up there. I mean, <laughs> get out there, B.C., Brooksy, kill it all, Bosco Dino, let's go. <laughs> so, we ended up. I won nine out of the ten games. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. So That's pretty it, good. We, we got a hockey DB to update you. Yeah, yeah, we got, they got to update is, these numbers. I'm incredible. surprised Scoop Scoop didn't get this updated. You know what? Scoop wasn't there uh, no. the main time. Yeah. No, okay. But, yeah, I, I played a lot more than they showed what I did. Um, That's it's crazy. But it was great. I that that team we, well we won the championship and we just went to Arizona a couple of years ago, 40th year anniversary, and we had 21 guys show up. It was oh, unbelievable. Wow. Awesome. And we hadn't seen the you know, while well, Bosco and Dino and I see each other, but we hadn't seen the rest of those guys since '76. 
It's crazy, it was unbelievable. Man. I remember you telling me going to that. That's awesome. Yeah. Right, well, so three years as as a Firebird, and then you move on to the Maine Mariners. Yeah. Uh, after we won, um, well, I went down one day. I was trying to get a date with one of the girls down to Spectrum. <laughs> so I'm standing oh, in the office. Uh, let me put my shock face on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing there and I'm talking to the secretary. Mr. Allen sticks his head out and he goes, Hey, I want to see you. And I went, Okay, sir. So I went in the office and he goes, I want you to be our first trainer in Maine. So it sounds awesome to me. Uh, I'm I'm in. Just tell me what you want to do. And he goes, well, we'll call you back. We're hiring a coach, and he'll want to interview you and stuff. So in a few weeks, I get a phone call from Bob McCammon. Yeah, KG. And uh, so high voice. Everything uh, went great, and uh, Mr. Allen on my first flight up to Portland, he sat me down and said, you know, here's what we're going to pay you. And he goes. He says, we know you, you can do the job, son, but he goes, this isn't the Eastern League. This is professional. You're going to have to behave. <laughs> well, yes, sir, Mr. Allen, I got it. It's cool. <laughs> so, You already had the, the, the street credit as, uh, as being a little bit of a troublemaker or what? It wasn't my fault. It's usually these other people. <laughs> yeah. You you say, yeah, yeah. It, you know what that's like, Riley. Like. Those it's other guys like. make you do stuff. Guilty by association, right? Now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. so... So that's funny, Dad. You never told me that he sat you down and kind of gave you like a heads up, hey, we don't need this. So why don't you tell everyone about your very first game as a Maine Mariner in the American Hockey League? Well, it wasn't our fault. <laughs> Let me start uh, off by saying it wasn't we, our fault. we go into New Haven our first game. So, you know, we'd been there like a month, you know, and then you go to your first game. We're on the road. So we had Jerome Morazic was one of our goalies, and we were waiting to get Rick St. Croix sent up from Philly. He's going to meet us in New Haven. So we go down that night. He never showed up. So start the game, typical American League game. It took about three or four minutes, and the gloves are flying, and everybody's off the benches. So the brawl is actually kind of calming down and, Somebody was holding Morazic, our goalie, and then all of a sudden here comes Sotard out of their net flying up, grabs him, and he's shaking him around. I went, so this is this is a, a bench clear has already started. Yeah, it's Four already, minutes into it's the been game. Going okay, in, I just yeah. want to make sure. Okay. So Sotard comes running out at the end of it, and he grabs Jerome, and the other guy's got him, and he's shaking him. I'm going, hey, jerk, relax. And he must have made a short joke or something, so I just <laughs> – had to open the door and talk to him a second. Luckily, I got the first one in before you kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great picture of oh, that, yeah. too, by the way. Yes. But, yeah, I, I he didn't expect me to come after him, but I did. And so four of our players got thrown out. I get thrown out and in the locker room, and I was still a little upset. And the guys are looking at me going, what are you doing? <laughs> And I went, well, we were shorthanded. <laughs> and Al Hill you, goes, good answer. <laughs> Al Hill is a little squirrel. He, uh, you imagine a trainer leaving the bench now to fight? Oh, he'd be never well, happy. He'd be, he'd be yeah. banned. So, so you guys went home after that game, and how'd the next day go? I think well, I remember you telling me Doc Emmerich, the great. Yeah. Mike well, Emmerich. we um, we get home, getting ready for practice the next morning, and uh, McCammon and Doc are in the office and. The camera comes back. He goes, you got a phone call in my office. And I went, oh, great. I'm going to get fired my first game. So I walk in. I pick up the phone. And he goes, uh, it's Keith. I said, yes, sir, Mr. Allen. And he goes, don't worry about it, kid. He goes, I like a little spunk in people. <laughs> oh, wow. There so you go. Yeah. Uh, a pat on the back. He, uh, but don't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he picked, I got fined 600 bucks. The guys that got thrown out got fined 125. I didn't barely make 600 a month, wow. <laughs> so uh, he he picked up my uh, fine, and then I got a nasty letter from the league commissioner, about six pages. So, uh, but then I got a Christmas card from him. <laughs> <laughs> this is your he, first... knew, he knew who I was. 
Yeah, right? This is your first game in the American League. And, yeah. And you earn street credit like that. It's pretty impressive. It's the, wait till you see the picture if you haven't oh, seen Ross. It. It's, it's unbelievable. How, how, how far into that season did you land up backing up or actually getting into a game? Because you played one game that season, right? Uh, n- not that one. It was uh, the next year. Oh, the next year. Later, okay, yeah. Right. Were you we, backing up at all, though? Did you get Oh, I was backing, into, backing up. You backing up. Yeah, okay. I was backing up games. Because we'd get injuries, and then they couldn't get guys in. We were, our farm team was Milwaukee, okay. and they couldn't get guys there in time. So I'd, I'd dress and, uh, you know, just be ready in case. But that night, McCammon put me in. We were getting hammered, and everybody's yelling and screaming at him. So he goes, you go play. I went 48 seconds to go in the game. <laughs> I went. No, man, come on. He goes, get in the net. So I go out there. Face-offs in the other end of the ice. I go, well, I, I should be able to handle this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't you know, their centerman flips the puck out. They got three guys just coming. Puck's on the right wing. My defenseman's there. It was a three-on-one. So I'm going, okay, I got this guy. Well, he dives at him. Oh, and takes he takes himself out of the play. Flips a puck <laughs> out in the, the slot. Got his lead in the league and goals just hammered one. I hadn't even moved and it was in and out. <laughs> at least the picture of that looks like you're moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like you're moving for it. Oh. So I, I got an earful on that one, obviously. And the next day they had a plaque in my locker with a picture of it. You know, the, the, the good go thing is, against. I remember uh, Mike Emmerich saying, like, saying that. Uh, well, at least they rounded off the the, the time to. So he's he <laughs> leads. He's all time leader in goals. Uh, well, I don't know. I got yeah. I I got the record of the worst goals against ever in the American League. <laughs> really? Oh 60, yeah. 60. 60. <laughs> <laughs> they rounded it I off. It was it like, was wow. worse. It was worse than that. But they rounded it off. Gave him a minute played instead. Yeah. <laughs> the 48 and then, seconds. And then we, uh, well, I kept, after I came out of Maine and we were down in uh, Philly, we were farm team in Hershey. So Clarky would send me down there to back up and stuff when they had problems. And I was up on a road trip in, uh, oh, I don't know where we were, up in Canada somewhere. And uh, Shaky Demore's, uh the goalie and Shaky's going, I'm going down in the first period. We got to get your average better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just play Shaky. You need to win. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, it would have had to have been proved. There's no way. It yeah. yeah, yeah right, worse, yeah. right? Like, oh, I just, should have gone I'd, in. I'd have started my own bench in here <laughs> if I'd have got scored on again. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. But so you guys were really successful in Maine. Oh, we, we were ridiculous. We really won the first year, won our championship. We won it the second year. Christmas time, we were like 25 and 4. Oh, wow. And teams didn't even want to go on the ice. We had skill. We had so much cement, you could have built a condo. <laughs> we, uh, there, well, Keith Acton that ended up playing here, he played for Halifax, Montreal's team. And he told me, he said, they come in that locker room against us in Maine. He goes, nobody scores the first two period. We'll try to get one in the third and get out of town alive. <laughs> <laughs> they they had no toughness. All little guys that could fly. They had this one poor Frenchman defenseman, and he got beat up six times a night. You know, Cochran would give it to him, then Jimmy oh, Cunningham man. and Mike Busnick and uh, whoever oh, we threw out there. And this poor guy just took a beating. Um, Andre Waugh was his name. Just a nice guy, just American League player. And he'd just get killed every time they played us. Riley might have had a situation <laughs> no. with an Andre Waugh. That was a different one, though. Yeah. Maybe that's his dad. <clears throat> Could be. Could be. Who knows? Never know. Uh, um, but, yeah, you guys, you, I remember, obviously, I have pictures and all that stuff. You guys were really successful. You you uh, had a couple of players I ended up coaching with down the road Terry Murray John Paddock. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. we we had uh, 
Oh, there's so many guys. Uh, well, we got Coetzee and Terry Murray with a trade from Detroit because Mr. Allen wanted to have a successful team in Maine, and he went out and traded, and he brought those two guys in. Murph won the defenseman trophy like three years in a oh, row. Dude. We we would have won that championship three years in a row. Lindbergh got hurt in the playoffs. He got hurt in the uh, fourth game, I think fifth game uh we were playing adirondack and they were good they had half of the detroit team right. sit down peter mahovlich is playing for them oh, greg wow. jolly who was a big time that. defenseman um they're a little tough guy um little right winger he's number eight i can't think of his name uh but they were loaded but we were too and uh but they McCammon goes, you and Lindbergh are staying in this rink tonight, and you work on his knee all night. We got to have him tomorrow. And he tried, but he just couldn't play, and we lost. Uh, or it had been three years in a row. But yeah. great town, great teams. And then, like you say, a lot of guys that got called up. The one year we had uh, Norm Barnes, Frank Bath, Mike Busnick, uh can't even think uh, some other guys, but five guys got called up, and three of the five guys made the All Star team in '80. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Uh, incredible. Hill, well, Hilly came up. He got five points his yeah, first right. game. Yeah, first yeah, game. Yeah, Psycho! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. And uh, and Brian Burke was there one year, was he not? Burke, he was, was there the first American year. Hockey League season he played. Yeah, I believe. one year. Now, I got to ask: was he was he tough? Did he fight? He couldn't fight, but he threw the body around. He did, yeah. Yeah. And then, would he uh, fight? Like, did he try? Oh, he to, would, yeah. He just wasn't well, great at it? Yeah. Okay. No, he'd, he'd jump in and stuff. Uh, well, in that brawl that night, in the picture, Berkey's got um, oh, Ken Hodge got sent down from the Rangers. Esposito, Hodge. And uh, Mike Corny, one of our guys they traded for, that was their big line when they were scored all those goals. And then Hodge got sent down. And then when the brawl started, Berkey grabbed Hodge oh, okay. and just held on. Oh, yeah, right. Right. Rode the bus. But Berkey's thing was, I'll hurt you with my shoulder more than that stick. And we go, are you nuts, man? I'll crack you right over the head with a stick. <laughs> Tell me. And then you hit me with your shoulder. Yeah, right. I'll lay down on the floor and you can hit me. <laughs> oh, man. But he, oh, he played his one year and uh, went on to college or more schooling and stuff. And yeah. Off to the GM market. Had a great career. Yeah, it's probably a smart move on his part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think yeah. it worked out <laughs> well right for him. <laughs> yeah, I think it worked out well. Um, he's always been good to me uh, because of dad. So, but we yeah. had uh, you're talking about the guys, but Paddock was with us, and yeah. uh, he wasn't wound too tight either. Yeah, right. He's tough. Yeah, yeah. right. And you didn't know if he was going to get this or a twig over the head. <laughs> He had options. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like it was a common theme back then. You know? Yeah. Like these guys are oh. wound up and ready to rock. And everybody showed up and played their brains out every yeah. night. Dude. The effort was, I mean, we were a sick group. Nobody wanted to play the main Mariners. Yeah. It kind of got that way with the, with the Phantoms here, obviously, yeah. years later, especially the first two years. And then, Riles, when you came – I mean, we had – I mean, guys, even Ryan Reddy was like, when he was the year before playing with um, Cincinnati, he's like, we felt like when we came into the spectrum late night to unload the gear, like, you're like, there's like blood on the wall <laughs> yeah, and shit right, like that. Yeah. And he's like, you guys come flying out of the tunnel and Gratton and Fridge and Riley, all these, you know, heavyweights. But I figure, you know, seeing all the names that came through Maine, like oh, Dave yeah. Brown. Um, didn't Brownie Darryl, shave his head? Brownie, Daryl Stanley. No. The, the, the Bruce Brothers. The Bruce Brothers, Brothers yeah. but people didn't realize that Stanley was tough as nails. Yeah. And he, they, Stan played defense. They put him up on the wing. You know, you didn't want to see that sucker forechecking you. No. And then, the one <laughs> no, year we put, to put Cocker up on left wing for a few games. Glenn Cocker. You know, oh, yeah. And, he was uh, tough, boy. It was, but we, we had – Guys that just worked their butts off and loved the game, but just 
tough. Yeah. yeah. I guess that was the staple of the Flyers organization, right? So naturally, anybody that's coming through the minor league system had yeah. to be somewhat wired, like, or all the way around the way that the actual main yeah. club was built, right? The Broad Street Yeah, I, uh, I, did, I don't know how to say this correctly, but you didn't have to be a total goon, but I think it just showed how much you wanted to win, what you would do. Yeah. You sacrifice everything for your team to win, and yeah. that's – that's what I'm all about. I'm a. I want team guys. I don't want to right. see a couple superstars sprinkled yeah. in. But I, I loved our guys there. They were tremendous. And would you say that was like consistent around the league, like with, with that type of like old school effort, or is it just like you just mainly talking about like ma- the main Mariners and the Flyers organization that you noticed that type of uh, grunt work? I gotta say we had six to eight legitimate tough guys. Yeah. The other teams would maybe have two or three. Oh, all right, yeah. So, yeah. Right. you that's know. That's hard to play against, yeah, that's right? A big like, you know. Yeah. You, You're outmatched. It, the, well, the one poor guy I used to feel so bad for in the National League was that Ken Danico. Oh, yeah. That, oh, poor, that poor sucker was their only tough guy at the time. So, you got Cocker coming after you. Then you got Brownie coming after you. And he tried his brains out. But the poor man's just going to get pummeled every yeah, night. Yeah. But he's a quality guy, and he did it. But that, that's why we just keep coming at you. And then you got Paddock coming off the wing at you, you know, after these other guys. It just, you can't Different take game, it. Man. Yeah, it was <laughs> different Different it's game, man. Like, when people say it was a man's game, I mean, I, it was a crazy man's yeah, game to me, was, yeah. watching a lot of that. Like, sure was. Um, but I, I do always remember, and remember how tough those teams were as a kid, you know watching it was wild oh yeah um so dad you, you you're in maine there you guys went a, a few and um you got pelly limberg there like like we talked about <clears throat> you got did you guys come to philly the same year or i came one year before him okay uh, how did he make it without you in maine <laughs> i don't know you guys seem like you're inseparable I, I don't know how he stayed out of jail or anywhere else <laughs> he had Go. well you know what Shastine moved over that year. Okay. So and she, that was a saving grace. He had a nice little uh, apartment downtown and stuff. But uh, that that was my boy. We had way too much fun. It was like having another little six-year-old brother or something. Yeah. Every city we go to, we go to sporting goods stores. And he goes, what's that? I go, it's a crossbow. He goes, we don't have one. Let's get it. <laughs> That's <laughs> we, not what either one of you needed. No. That's for okay. sure. We leave the place with a big target and a crossbow. <laughs> this idiot's in the backyard, and he's trying to load the thing. Fing, it's yeah. gone. <laughs> I'm going, oh, I'm glad it's just woods out there. Yeah, right. But, so, Ross, well, well, uh, a couple of times that I went before the, the accident, um, I would come up, see Dad, and in a couple of times I spent the night with – Pelly and I felt like I was a kid with a kid my age because yeah. he had the toy cars, cars that no one had yet, like the real fast ones. Yeah, like you had never seen these things, and they're going down the road. And I remember he's like, "Dear, do one." I'm like, "No, man, I'll like I don't." He's like, "Just do it," and I ran it right at the curb. The thing exploded. He's <laughs> dying laughing. He's like, "Don't worry about it, man." <laughs> he can give two shits, but uh, he took me to the mall. He'd always take me to the mall, get me something. Yeah, he was he was awesome, cool. man. He was yeah, awesome we're guy. still up in Maine. So one day he decides he's going to make a airplane with a gas engine in it. So he works on the thing for about a week, paints it up. It's 40 degrees in Maine. Sunday morning, the, the mall's closed. He goes, let's go fly this thing. I said, Gump, it's not going to fly. It's got to be 60, 70 degrees for that engine to run. Oh, it'll, I'll get it going. <laughs> Take the thing out. It did start. It went, Roop. <laughs> lasted about 10 seconds but he he was up for anything and then he got the cars and we had those down here and they were nuts but he had yeah, the one time dad you, you had to almost strangle him he threw me in the car well i probably made it worse than it, it really was but he did kind of scare me he had a you know, he liked to drive fast, and yeah. I got in the car. We were going to the mall. I think he was going to take me to the mall, and there was this – where were we at? U Penn, where you guys practiced. Yeah, 
and you're coming back up 295 is his first Porsche is his old copper one. So I got home first, and I'm sitting watching TV, and he come in the door. He's white as a ghost. And I went, what's wrong? He goes, we're doing 141, Dad. So Gump comes in the door, and I just grabbed him by the throat. I said, you don't do that with my kid in the car, you <laughs> fool. <laughs> oh, we were just having a ride. <laughs> you know, casual cruise on the road. Whatever it was. Oh, oh that's crazy. 141 miles an hour. Um, so was he, uh, well... Obviously, he's still, people still talk about how great he was. Like, he, he wasn't overly big. I guess she didn't no. really have to be back he then, was, right? He was, Gump was about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, 180 pounds. But he was in good shape and strong, had no flexibility whatsoever. Really? really yeah. He couldn't bend his arm up and touch his shoulders. Wow. Why? He, he's just bound up he never stretched oh, enough or wow, anything that's crazy but his reflexes were so fast he was ridiculous but if you watched him him saves he made kick saves he could only put one leg down at a time mm. oh. but he, he was just a ridiculous athlete loved it worshiped bernie perrant when he was a kid came over here uh Wanted to do everything like Bernie, use Bernie's sticks. And I'll take the credit for one thing that helped him. He was using a live 14 stick, and it's too high, and every time he'd go to kick out, everything went under his uh. stick. So I gave him one of my little midget live 12s. <laughs> I said, here, use this thing. And then when he'd kick out with it, it stayed flat. Okay. So, uh, But it, it took him a little while to get adjusted. And um, when he came down here with a big team, Clarkie grabbed him and was on him all the time about what he had to do to be the best. He told him how hard Bernie worked every day in practice and stuff, and he grabbed it, and he ran with it. He, I mean, he was absolutely ridiculous that last year. I mean, he just walked us through Quebec Nordiques. I mean, they were tough, good games. But he was winning them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And he was, the guys loved him. He was just like having a pet dog in the locker room. Yeah. Just, a, just a clown. <laughs> That's awesome. That's oh, awesome. man. So who uh, who else were your favorite? Uh, sounds like he was one of your your, your favorite players. Uh, who, who else? Because you, you play, I mean, you worked with a ton of awesome dudes. Well, I tell you why. Back then, Great guys. Uh, my first year down here, you know, get to go to the National League, and I got Bob Clark, Billy Barber, Reggie Leach sitting in that room. Yeah. Just the first three to talk about. Yeah. Never any problems. Just Billy Barber go, make sure I got an extra set of liners in these plastic skates. Okay, Bill, they cost <laughs> 20 bucks. <laughs> Reg, Reggie, don't let me run out of sticks. And then uh, Clark, he just make sure I got a bucket of chew going, you know, <laughs> and just watching those guys play every night, just ultimate, you right. know. Oh, yeah. sure. And sure. Uh, then uh, one of my best friends, uh, Ilka Sinisalo, yeah. we did everything together, uh, our families and Ilka and his two boys and wife actually live with me in the summer. They go home to Finland a little while and then they come back and stay that. with me. Yep. And mm -hmm. I, we kept Seagram's VO in business there for a couple of summers. <laughs> That's uh, the worst, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we did. Karina, she's fun too. She get in there with the boys and. Somebody say, "What are you drinking, Karina?" And I went, "Anything that's wet." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, we had a great time, and then uh, my buddy passed away on me, and uh, the other guy that I hung with a lot was Mark Howell. Yeah, yeah, we Howell had we I, had bugger we had bugger <laughs> on here. Howell's a trip, man. He's he's all business, but we usually had our one day a month and just come unwound a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're sharing a few stories. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's, a good, yeah he's, he's a good man. He really is. Yeah, you had the opportunity to work with some some legends, but not legendary hockey players only, but oh, people, just, you know. 
pretty that's good. the thing about the Flyers. And back in those days, and Keith's running the show, and then Clarky, we always had solid citizens yeah. on your team. If you had a guy that was a bit of a flake or didn't really fit in, See, they'd unload yeah, right him in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know. And, so. and you know, <clears throat> on that too, like Mr. Snyder, what an owner. I mean, you know, even when I was lucky enough to finally follow you and and get there, like I mean, you couldn't. And Riley, you know this. Like mm. you couldn't ask for a better owner that no. really cared for for everyone. Uh, you know, everyone that was there, he cared about. He uh, he did. I mean, everybody in that room meant something to him. And uh, when your granddad was uh, sick and ready to pass away, yeah, we we're out in uh, Pittsburgh. He came over to me and he goes, you go to the airport tomorrow and take my jet, go see your dad. And I said, I can't do that, sir. It just won't work. He goes, you be on that jet at 7 in the morning. Yeah, I remember when you came. Put me on that jet, went home to Greensboro and uh, saw him, spent the day, and then I had to go back to Montreal. And I said, I know as soon as I leave, he'll die. Yeah. That jet from Greensboro got to Montreal in an hour and a half. I mean, you can actually feel that thing move. Airplanes, you don't feel move. So I get in there, I walk in my room, lights blinking. So yeah, turned around, went back home. But that that was unbelievable that he would give me his jet. Yeah, wow. yeah, he's he's a good man. Um, and you guys. We, we touched on Mike Keenan a little bit earlier. So he comes back to now, and he's a coach. <laughs> so you got to, like, anyone that's played for Keenan <coughs> or anything, we've had it. You got to give us something. You got to give us something on Mike. Well, I know your buddy's with him and everything, but, well, like. Well, Mike and I are, were friends just from being Roanoke and stuff. But uh, Mike, he could get so hard on guys and make me mad. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, and then I get upset, and then he get mad at me. He goes, this is what we're doing and this and that. And I go, well, Mike, I understand how you want to run your show, but, you know, I mean, we had a few confrontations, and uh, he get ticked at me, and then DJ and Homer come, such you got to back off a little, you know. I, mean, <laughs> I said, I just said what I believe, and you know that yeah. my mouth flies open, and that's what happens, but... <laughs> It just some of the guys, I I I thought he was ruining them. Yeah, yes. oh for sure. We hear we hear that a lot. I mean, we hear yeah. a lot of guys like you know, like almost praise him, but then like you know they talk about being hard. Was there a fine line of like being hard and being like disrespectful? And like you said, almost ruining them. Like there's a fine line there of pushing someone, it, and you're pushing someone almost over the edge. It right? is. It. Uh, I felt bad for some of the guys. You know, like. I would even go talk to guys later. I mean, Mike made his point, but he just abused some guys so bad. Uh, even the one guy that Peter Zazel, Peter worked his butt off and became a pretty good hockey player and a little more hard nosed than he would have been because Mike was just on him constantly. And I used to feel bad for Peter. And he abused Ronnie Sutter really bad. Yeah. Uh, Richie's on the team, and he'd go, I'm going to send your brother so far away the hockey news won't find him. <laughs> you know. Thanks a lot. And, <laughs> and I go, come on, Mike. I mean, those guys go to the bathroom together. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And I used to feel bad for Ronnie like that because, well, both of them are just blood and guts for the team. Right. And Ronnie – he, I, I loved him. He, They're two of the nicest I, guys. Oh, I mean, just I, the nicest We just had people. that alumni game. Yeah. Ronnie's out there hacking and chopping just like he played well, the well, game. Well, what'd you think about old Riggs out there just burying? Not a big deal. I mean, oh, yeah. first shift. Yeah. Well, let's show them what we're here for. Yeah. And we're, Selling we're, down the saucer pass from Brash. We're, we're there on the bench and Royal scores. And Keenan turns around looks at me and goes, is this how this game's going to go? <laughs> <laughs> we're all dying laughing oh that's great yeah oh that's awesome so um also dad quickly but with the flyers um you you lost in two finals right 
Didn't you yeah. guys? Yeah, that sucks, man. You get that uh, far. I did one. 80, 85 and 87. And obviously Edmonton was ridiculous, but our guys played so hard. 85 we lost. There was guys crying on the plane coming home. Yeah, it, it was bet. tough. And then uh, 87, we really thought we had them. And then one bad break in that third period, and they came back and got us. Talked to Gretzky a year later or something, and there was a scheduling problem where we had to wait three days. We couldn't play, and we ended up staying in Edmonton three days for the game. Gretz said if we would had to play that next night, we would have beat them. He said they were dead. Really? They, they had no legs whatsoever, and that three days got them pumped up. And they ended up beating us. Well, the big, the big question then is, where were you for three straight days, or do we want to know? We don't. We don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can so try to piece that together. Well, you know what? I can tell you. That's <laughs> all right. I, I probably should tell you. I've seen this show before, and I. <laughs> I've seen this show before. We got. You know how small that bench is in Edmonton? Yeah. The old, the old yeah. one. You can't yeah. move. you got to stand behind. So McCammon is going to give uh, me and uh, Kurt Munt, the trainer, a break. He goes, you don't have to stay with us downtown. We're going to put you at the hotel across the street from the rink. And he goes, I'm tight with the owner. He's going to take care of you guys. So we're going, all right, maybe we'll get some free drinks or something. So we're in the bar drinking, and the next thing you turn around, here comes six dancing ladies. <laughs> and I go, yeah, you're well, saying we got to go. <laughs> it just, it just kind of got out of hand after that. So the next <laughs> night, one way of putting it, I'm on the bench, and I worked all the way down, not towards the hallway. I got nowhere to go. Lights are down, national anthem's going, and I hear somebody banging on the glass, and I turn around, and there's one of the dancers, and she's dropping me booklets of her, some of her pictures over the bench. Oh and, and, I, and I'm going, go away, go away. Disappeared. <laughs> National League. Keenan's looking at me, and I'm going, I'm dead. Oh. I'm, I'm dead right here. <laughs> oh, my God, that that's great. Classic. So so uh anyway you lose you lose in in that one that's that game 7 Hexie ends up win, winning the uh Con Con Smythe. Smythe. I mean god I mean that was that was heartbreaking every everybody well and we were down guys so we, Timmy Kerr's out Poolin's playing with broken ribs we're sticking needles under his ribs coming back inside of him wow he had to. It took about forty-five minutes to an hour to numb him up every night, and uh, McCremen was out. Brad Marsh played out of his mind in that playoff. He was all over the place. He played great. How he played great. Yeah. Uh, just a tremendous effort. It's so painful to lose those. Yeah. Uh, but that's, into that's, it. that's that's the grind, man. Yeah, you go through is. that two months, and it's a war. Yeah. yeah, especially I mean, not that it's not now; it is now too. But like looking back at the way the game was played, yeah, exactly, and yeah. I mean, it was just such a harder game with the with the hooking right, and the yeah. holding, and I mean, you you basically you had to fight. It was almost <laughs> yeah, like being a running back in football to right. get through, just to get a chance right on that. Yeah. Um, but. I obviously remember that. I was think I was 16 when you guys went to Game Seven, and JJ Daniel scored that humble that, that goal. The goal at home. They everyone's. I obviously wasn't there, but people used to tell me that they thought that was the loudest that building had ever been. Yeah, like when he scored that goal to make Game Seven to send it to Game Seven. Yeah, I I'll never forget that. He was here. And we're down on this end, and when he shot, Murray Craven was off to the side of the net. I remember Murray on his knees going nuts. So, and oh, you didn't Jay, know it had gone in? Oh, uh, we didn't know at first. Yeah. And then everybody went crazy, but it, it was. That that almost took the roof off the old spectrum. Yeah, that's that's what everyone said. I remember everybody saying that. It was like one of the loudest uh, they'd ever heard that building. Um, but uh, so <clears throat> dad leaves the Flyers when uh, Clarkie leaves. And a uh, quick, quick little story. So – he leaves, 
I'm in college. I'm a freshman. So I got myself in one. Like it's like a Friday night or Saturday. I don't even know what day it is, but I like get up, go to shit. I'm like, what's the fuck? Someone pierced my ear that night. Oh, I didn't remember. God. Okay, so I go take a shower because in the fresh, you couldn't stay. You had to stay in a freshman dorm your freshman year, like even if you played sports. So I'm, I go to. I didn't have a roommate at this time. It's the second semester. My roommate, see, he got kicked. I don't know what happened to him, but either way, I go shower, come back to my room. I like, got turn music on and I'm like looking in the mirror. I'm going, you gotta be. I had like a lightning bolt or something. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> this thing's hanging. It wasn't even just a diamond. It was like a dangling oh, earring, man. like Shazam or something, like a lightning <laughs> yeah. bolt. And I'm like going, what did you do? Like, why did you let him put that thing in there anyway? Like, couldn't it just be a normal? Anyway, yeah. so there's a knock on my door. I haven't heard. I haven't talked to him. I open the door. There he is. Hey, Biff. <laughs> he goes, the old, the old what? And he goes, nice earring. <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me right now. Yeah, so he's laughing. I'm like, I don't know what happened, dude. <laughs> Someone pierced my ear last night. But anyway, Clark, he goes to Minnesota. And you guys have, have, have always been tight. He always looked after you. He looked after me as well, obviously. Um, but uh, you go to Kalamazoo. Yeah. What a place. International League. Scary. Clark, <laughs> Clark, he calls me and he goes, hey, I need you to. He goes, we got too good a team down there. He goes, I don't know what's wrong. He goes, I need you to go down there and be my guy. I went, all right, I'm in. So I went down there on my birthday, turned 40. So, I'm uh, there. <laughs> kid, creeping. this guy that I'd met earlier, another brilliant Finn, Yarmo Milas. Oh, yeah, I remember him. I remember him. <laughs> another goalie, just nuts. And uh, so I walk in, and he goes, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm with you, man. He goes, take my car keys and don't give them to me for three days. He goes, we're partying tonight. <laughs> so they had a couple days off. So I went to the party with the guys and all the wives and whatever else was there <laughs> and i'm sitting there and i'm looking around and i'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> that's saying so, something yeah so two days of partying and then monday we go to practice and uh clark he calls me he goes how was your weekend i went scary i said these people scared me he goes shut up i went yeah bob i said i i can tell you what your problem is <laughs> well, you have an alcohol issue here <laughs> so we're, we're we're starting a playoffs a week later so john marks is a coach great guy played for the blackhawks and stuff he goes sudsy i heard you're a golfer i said yeah i love it john he goes well, me and you are playing tomorrow. And I said, well, I didn't bring my clubs. It's the playoffs. He goes, get your clubs in here. So I call Roberta. I went, overnight my clubs. I'm playing golf this week. <laughs> so we're playing Muskegon, which is like 45 minutes away, first round of the playoffs. We got tee times at 10 o'clock, playing to 3 or 4, get on the bus at 4.45 and go play the game. We swept them. <laughs> wow. That's just how good they were. Yeah. They had so much skill, but they were who they deserved to be in the minor leagues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Clarky took took Minnesota the finals. I don't know if it was well, that they, year or, is, or the yeah. next year, but they ended up going and losing to a really good Pittsburgh team, obviously. But yeah. he no, turned they, that around quick. I mean, yeah. whatever. They had it. Well, I just when they had all the young kids, young Hatcher, Hatch, yeah, Medano, Hatch. oh, right, yeah. uh, this crazy little guy, Craig, little blonde, curly haired guy, he can yeah. dangle. Uh, but they played well, had a good time there. So, and then uh, I did two years in the zoo, and then Clarky called me and said, We got a new adventure. <laughs> yeah. We got to go to the Florida Panthers yeah, and really. start that. There you go. That was that, my first. That job. was absolutely the greatest year of my life, starting yeah. a place from scratch. You know, he goes, I got the team. He goes, You go build the locker rooms and the rinks and uh, don't screw it up. I said, <laughs> Okay, Bob. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a fun year. I I will have to admit the first week when we actually started when camp started, I was I called my mom three days in because he didn't let us go to bed for three days. So finally, the third day when I was able to call home, I said, I don't know if I can do this shit. 
because we didn't go to bed. Like he's, he, I'm like, what are we doing? Because <laughs> I remember the first night, I kind of understood. We we take this 18 wheeler down. We how many guys we have? 80 at camp. We 70? had 80 at wow. camp. 80 at camp. Insane. Roger wants 14. And the funny, I think I've, I've told you this before, Riles, but we go to the the team uh, meeting. Six o'clock at night, and the camp's officially starting the next day. And he's like, uh, "You know, I don't want you guys fighting each other. You know, we'll wait to the games and show us what you got." Well, they dropped the puck first first scrimmage. There must have been fifteen fights. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it. it was fight after fight after fight. You know, Roger, cheesy cripes. You know, these guys, I told you guys not to fight, you know, like, crap sakes, boys. You know, he didn't swear, right? So um, we told that story to Johnny LeClaire, Dad, about, uh, I'll never forget us being in New York. And I can't remember Roger's, I don't know if it was his wife or his girlfriend. Girlfriend. He came up to you and said, oh, geez, Sudsy, hey, we were necking last night. And my neck's killing. And but that, Sudsy's like, Dad's like, what? You were what? He goes, we were necking. He's like, oh, did you get some, Roger? Oh, for crap's sake, Sati. That's all you guys think about. <laughs> kind of walking off, you know, and it's just so funny to hear Roger say. He couldn't think of what he wanted to say. He was like, we were we were necking. You know, uh, what? Like, necking? <laughs> what the hell is that? But, I uh, said, did she abuse you last night, Roger? <laughs> No, but I, I'm just, you know, but he, he was hysterical, but one of the nicest men ever. He drove us nuts, but as a, a person, he is just unbelievable. He Really nice. About a month before Christmas, he grabs me one day out on the bench. He goes, go into my office. He goes, you'll find some checks. He goes, grab one for $4,000 and just go cash it. I got to mail some stuff out. So I go and I'm digging. You know, all his paychecks are just there. He never Come even on. cashed them, you know. So I look for one. Is I don't know, forty six hundred or something. I had him sign it. I go down and get it. And I said, "What do you want me to do?" He goes, "We'll get the team truck. I got about a hundred packages to send to Canada." Jeez. He had what was that place called? They called it. He had a he had a place where he had like camps and stuff. Yeah. Like he he oh yeah up it's in up Peterborough. In but it, but yeah. we went up there for camp one year. But he was a nice man. He was such a nice man. Um, but it, it was cool getting to work, and he ended up coming to the Flyers there for a little bit before he got sick. Yeah, poor guy. He was he was a great guy though. I remember one night that uh, in New York when we were they think the game was tied, and we were right in the play in the mix. Like we we literally missed the playoffs by one point because uh, Hexy and, and the Islanders beat us by one point, and we went five and zero against them that year. We had, the team that Clarky put together was just a hard working team. Scott Melamy scored thirty goals; he was the leading scorer. And yeah. you know, if you ever said that to somebody, they'd be like, "Nothing against Mel, but no way he's going to lead your team in scoring, yeah, right? right?" Like yeah. Dad knows more about him than I do as a player, but great guy. But the team was just so close. Brian Sc- Scrudlin, the captain, one of the funniest humans I've ever met in my life. But we were. Uh, Dad was known for being able to call illegal sticks. And I remember we were, I think we were tied 2-2 two, two or 3-3 three, three in MSG. And you told Roger, you're like, I don't, was it Nemchinov or Kovalev? I don't remember. It was a Russian. It was Kovalev. It was Kovalev. And he was young, obviously young. Um, but he had, Dad goes, call a stick, call a stick. And he's like, you sure, Sudsy? Yeah, gosh, crap sakes. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And Dad's like, it's illegal. Call it. Call it now, because he'll because ch- guys used to change a stick right, near yeah, the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. Called it, f- power play, boom, wow. win the game. So that good was eye. I thought that was pretty. Yeah, he had a good eye for it. And too tall, that that scumbag. I mean that lovingly because he's awesome. But he used to do that in Hartford. He was coaching in Hartford, mm-hmm. and we had our sticks in there one night because we couldn't move into the room, and he he was measuring those things because <laughs> the next day he called Mike Maniluk. Oh, yeah. On a, I mean, you could kind of see his stick, and he had a he had a legal one, but I got him the next year because he called Ryan Bast, and I told Beast, I'm like, this guy's gonna call your stick, and I made him one like straighter. I heated up the blades. You know, you had those rigs. Oh yeah, the I did. Flat, yeah, the flat <laughs> like, his was like really curved, and I and he called <laughs> Beast, and they and they got the penalty, and I was like, yeah. I didn't know too tall that well then, so I, but I wanted to give him the finger. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, man. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, Florida was. Man, we met a lot of good people. We had so much fun there. Yeah. It, was, it was awesome. Yeah, back in those days, we used to call uh, a lot of sticks. And it, it was just something, my eye, and I knew where they'd hook them or 
couldn't hook them. And we'd take some of our guys and make a bigger hook, but I'd shave the heel down, yeah. and it make the thing legal. Oh, right, yeah. But they'd break easier. But but Cameron was the best. We'd be going, we're struggling. He'd turn around, Sanji, give me something. I'm struggling here. <laughs> <laughs> I went, call that guy. And he'd call it, and we'd get a power play. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. So Different yeah, that, that that was that was a good year, and then we uh, got to I got to work with my dad. Like I said, that that was my first year, and once I realized what was going on, then then I kind of understood. But you threw me to the wolves one night, not purposely. The the team's on the road, so they split the team. Well, one team's coming back, and it happens to be John Van Beesbrook is with them. The bus is supposed to bring the gear to the, to the arena. Guy never shows up, just goes to bed, takes the players to the hotel, goes to bed. All the gear is soaking wet. Oh, no God. extra laundry. Boys come in, and I stay up all night. Can't get a hold of him. He's in Hartford. I think you guys were in Hartford. Yeah. And these guys had played Tampa, so long story short, boys come in carrying their bags. And thank God for Joe Sorella, Joe Mama. He was like, don't worry about a kid. I'm like, Joe, I was waiting here all night. Like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where you guys were. Bought Beezer. Beezer comes in. What the fuck is going on here? This is bullshit. I had to go through it. I knew nothing, man. I've yeah. been doing this for a week. And like laundry, like I had to remember I had to open up all new laundry because their shit was soaked. Right. Uh, but I'm like, all right, I don't know how this is going to work. How much longer? I've been to bed once in four days. And now I'm getting screamed at by some dude I don't even know calling me a motherfucker and this and that. And I'm like, but I ended up loving Beezer. Like once we got to know him, he was. But uh, he, he was, was an unbelievable tall, but, player that oh, year. Like he, was, he, he was an all star. Like he was, he kept he kept the, the team in so many games. And Mar Fitzpatrick too had a good year. He was a little wild. Yeah, Fitzy was a little Fitzy wild. Fitzy was out there, but Beezer, I'd never seen anybody. He put a clinic on every night. I'd seen him play in New York and stuff, and he was good. Yeah, he was ridiculous. He just everything is in the middle of his body, but he was uh, pretty demanding. If there are anything trainer! Like that, you I hear him screaming. The one night he's screaming, trainer. Not even a name. No. Trainer. trainer. <laughs> yeah. I think I went. I think the one night I went in there, he's like, and he sees me, he goes, get your dad. I'm like, all right. All right. What do you need? Go back to, dad comes down and goes, his Kleenex box was half full. Come on. Well, I, mean, well, I was doing the medical and everything yeah, right. else. So I'm in there with somebody and bees are was freaking out. He usually yells Sudsy all the time. But I had to go in. He had to see my face. And I went, what's up, Beezer? He goes, I need Kleenex. <laughs> so I just get him a thing and give it to him. And But the guy uh, was, he was, he was great. There, and yeah. he was always good to us other than he get a little strung out at the game. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Yeah. So um, then we came back to Philly for a couple of years and, and – um, you know, I got to work with dad then, and I was it was one was a half season. It was great here being back here doing that, and and uh, we had a lot of fun. A couple of good years too, good teams. We uh, yeah. made it to the conference final. Um, the one year the jersey ended up winning, right? Jersey ended yeah. up winning, yeah. Um, but we lost to them. But uh, we that's when we we made the trade. We got Johnny and Rico or Desjardins. Good guys, love yeah. those guys, and we we had good players. We had Rex too, and uh, and then <laughs> Hextall and Gar Snow, two beautiful people. Beside <laughs> one out trying to outdo the other one, who was goofier? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. It's pretty. Uh pretty incredible story i mean you're, you're you know like i didn't know half this stuff and, and to hear hear you know your journey and uh and bits and pieces of how you know how you introduced nasty to it and, and the whole bit is pretty pretty amazing because i know, was yeah. really fortunate yeah i got to do what i wanted to do but I was hooked. 1959, I saw that first hockey game, and I just loved it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember more then players' names than I know what went on last week. Yeah. I, and uh, we just had, before I left town uh, in Greensboro, we had a reunion. We had about eight old Greensboro generals and uh, one guy from Charlotte, uh, one of their goons came over <laughs> to our party. Uh, it was it was awesome just yeah. to see guys like that. 
That's cool. That is really, really cool. Um, Dad, I know you're doing, we'll, we'll wrap this up, but I know you're doing a lot, still doing a lot with the alumni and the, and the Philadelphia Warriors. Yeah. Yep. Brad Marsh doing an unbelievable job yes, he uh, is. with all of that. And, um, yeah, I, did, I really enjoyed that. He got me involved when they first started. I came up from Carolina. We had the training camp and stuff and uh, treated them like pro players right off the start. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Brad's worked really hard. I mean, we started out with one team, got three teams yeah. down. God, he's got, got so many. Just, yeah. just won the championships. Yeah, that was here a awesome. Couple of All three ago. teams, too. Yeah, you it, were up here for it. It was. Now, do, when's your rings coming? Uh, I'm waiting on that ring. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I didn't know if you were. We, yeah. I, we, I tell you what, that game was so. The last game was so good. There was about eight or nine flyers out there watching the game. They're yeah, banging that on was the great. Glass. I saw that. That was yeah, great. Yeah, and I went. So I walked around. They were standing there where we left. I said, the boys, that's real hockey out there. And they <laughs> all were laughing, but they thought it was great too. But these guys are so into it, and they listen to Marsh just yeah. like they're nine years old, and he's their yeah. squirt or peewee coach. And uh, he's done a heck of a job with that and grown that. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. it's amazing. And all those guys are such good dudes. Me, yeah. Riley and I get to spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. And they're just great guys, man. Yeah. So. I'm glad you're getting to do that to help them too, because I know they they love all the hard work you and and, and Turk and Hedgehog and everybody does. So yeah, and Culpe feel like pros. Yeah, I mean. yeah. So yeah, we we enjoy it because they're just so into it. You oh, see yeah. what yeah. they get from it. I should change one of my questions and dump Hextall and say uh, Mr. Duffy's my favorite. Well, well, yeah. well I was going to say Duff's, Duff's going to be a little upset if you don't go with him. <laughs> Got to throw him he's, in there. He's the yeah, man. He's the man. Yeah. He's the man. Um, but thanks, Dad. We appreciate yeah. you. I know you had a long day and uh, not feeling the greatest, but uh, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, it was great. Appreciate yeah, it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Suds. That episode was brought to you by Cure Leaf, a medical marijuana dispensary. My favorite medical marijuana dispensary. I know it is. Been working with them for some time. Appreciate the support uh, the last few years. And whether you're a longtime patient or you're just getting acquainted with this incredible plant. Cure Leaf of Pennsylvania is honored to guide you along your medical marijuana journey. Have questions? Visit cureleaf.com or stop into any one of their 12 locations. Want to talk medical marijuana? Let their confidence become yours. Yes, sir. They are awesome. Awesome. Appreciate the support. Yep. 100%. Did an amazing job. And big thanks to Sudzi, Dave Settlemeyer, your father. Yep. The yep. legend. I guess I have to. Uh, I guess I have to take him. I mean, he's he's my dad. He's your dad. <laughs> he's a mess. He's a beauty. Yes, he is. One of a kind. What an amazing story. I had no idea. I mean, I knew a lot about Sudsy. Yeah, obviously from you. It's but. crazy how he got started, and you know, I forget sometimes that he actually played. He actually played uh, professionally. Yeah, like he was a trainer, man. <laughs> you see the guy. He's five foot six. Oh man. Um, I used to, you know, I, I would get so excited when he, when I was a kid and I would come up as I started getting older, he practiced every day because Ron Hextall didn't like to skate on game days. So my dad was practicing every day and, you know, I didn't think anything of it until I got a little bit older. I'm like, dude, he's going to get killed. Look how little, look how little he is <laughs> in the net. But, uh, he, it, it Resilient. was fun getting to, to see him do that and, and, uh, he actually, we didn't get into this because dad could talk forever, as we see. Uh, but he actually backed two games. He was the backup goalie for the Flyers for two games. He was so nervous he didn't situate himself Jeez. at the bench. Uh, I remember the one time I turned the game on a Sunday afternoon, and they were playing the New Jersey Devils. And as I turned it on, Doc Emmerich's working for the Flyers at that time, him and Billy Clement, I believe it was. And uh, they show a picture as soon as i turn the tv on there's a picture of my dad in his main mariners uniform and i'm like what uh -oh. and i start listening and i'm like he's been forced into backup duty today wow. for the flyers because ken reggett took a puck in the neck and pete peters wasn't even supposed to back up but he did they didn't think anything would happen uh reggett gets a puck in the neck can't play pete goes in so as soon as i see this i call my dad 
in the spectrum in the medical room where his office was and he answers the phone and I'm like, dad, are you going to play? And he's like, Biff, I got to call you back. And he hangs up on me and I'm like, damn. And me and my best friend, wow. uh, Kent Chilton, we're sitting there and we're losing it. And of course I'm hoping he's, he's going in, not knowing like, obviously now at this point, I'm like, geez, if he goes in, like he's going <laughs> to yeah. shit his pants. Uh, but I just wanted my dad to get in the game. Oh, man, so that would wild. find out afterwards Pete Peters was cramping so bad. Oh. He was so dehydrated, but he, they were giving him IVs. And after the game, my dad called me. And he's like, I'm sorry I hung up on you. He's like, I was literally sweating bullets. I thought I was going to have to play. This was so. a playoff. Like, we had to win to get wow. in the playoffs. Imagine that. So I, I, we didn't get to talk about that, but that was one of my favorite things as a kid, seeing him. And it happened one other time against Detroit where he was forced to back up. Oh, that's incredible. So. We'll have to bring him on for 2.0 for, uh, <laughs> yeah. for that story. But, yeah, yeah. there were so many – so many stories this the 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 whole journey itself is yeah it's crazy. surreal um you know coming you, from you north carolina and, and yeah that's and, and that's the, the thing. funniest thing and equipment manager medical guy defenseman goalie i mean <laughs> he, up and he, down all around he, he didn't mention he actually had a full ride to university of tennessee to play defense no for their way. hockey team and that summer their program folded Oh, so wow. that's why he ended up at High Point University on a baseball scholarship. Oh wow! He, he was a hell of a. Yeah, he didn't even talk about his baseball. He was a hell of a baseball player. Wow! Um, I have to get him back on. Yeah. There's so a, there's a lot of gold there. I he mean, says he loves to talk. He loves to talk. Well, we saw that. <laughs> we love Sorry, the ladies and gentlemen, but he gets going. But it is. It's it's pretty insane what yeah. how it happened and and you know being a stick boy. Like, he had no intentions on being a goalie. He just was yeah, helping right, yeah, out, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, just filling where he could. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's on a <laughs> five, ten-day contract, with, yeah. and he's 18 years old. So uh, it, it was cool. There's so many things, but uh, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Sometimes I kind of forget about it, but it no, is. No, it's interesting, you know, and to, to hear it, you know, f from his mouth and you know, understand your roots a little bit more, too, is yeah. it's pretty cool. So uh, we'll definitely have to bring him back on, you know. He, he's He's got so much there, and, uh, again, he's – been around these flyers guys forever and yeah. knows probably more more about these guys than most people so yeah he saw he saw out. a lot and uh i learned a lot from him that's for sure i used to think he was crazy <laughs> couldn't understand why he had me do the things i did until i was in charge of my first team with the phantoms and then like, i'm ah, like I okay it, yeah. i get it because everything is a reflection of you of course so people used to laugh how like if like elbow pad was out of you know out of place, I had to go move it. They're like, "What's nobody even sees that?" I'm like, <laughs> "I do." Yeah, you know. Right. But that's how he was. Yeah, so. for sure. That's um, great. Anyway, well, that's awesome. It was uh, it was amazing. Good uh, good call bringing Sedzi on. Loved every bit of it. Yeah, do it again. So <laughs> that's a wrap. Episode fifty three in the books. Nast fifty three. All right. Thank you guys for everything. All the support. It's been awesome. Appreciate it. Until next week. Drop an episode 54. Yes, Stay sir. safe, knuckleheads. See you, knuckleheads.